Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you. You're a worthy, precious Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For truly he is worthy of the glory and the honor. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Magnify your Lord God. We give you glory. We lift you up, King Jesus. You reign in power, dominion, and authority, both now and forever. You are the good shepherd. You are the bishop of our souls. For there's no God like Jehovah. Hallelujah. Precious cornerstone. Lord, you're faithful. You keep us steadfast in the faith of Jesus Christ. For there's no one like you in all the earth, O God. All the earth shall worship you, sing praise to thy name, O Most High. You are the rock of ages. You are everything we need, God, and more. And we honor you, King Jesus. Our souls make it boast in you, O God, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. We praise you, Lamb of God, King Jesus. You reign forever and ever. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Bless your name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you. We give you praise, O God, for the victory in Christ Jesus. Bless your name, bless your name, bless your name. Amen to God be the glory, the honor, and the praise, both now and forever. This is a beautiful day to praise the Lord, the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As our souls make his boast in the Lord, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. What a mighty God we serve. It's been a beautiful day. <clears throat> the weather's pretty good. Thank the Lord for that. In spite of all the changes we've been going through with the weather, God has still blessed us to see another day. Amen. Amen. I thank the Lord for this opportunity to come again to teach his word. I pray that it's been inspirational to you and encouraging and enriching to your spirit. That is empowering you to keep moving forward in your purpose for purpose. For truly this is the day that we can glorify God no matter what things appear with the natural eye, how they feel, what's going on in our lives. The Lord is still good and his mercy endures forever. I got a call this evening from a friend of mine I haven't spoken to in quite some time who's going through pancreas cancer. And he went through a major tumultuous change in his health as well as his body. And yet God still uses people to come to encourage him in the midst of discouragement. And I thank God for him reaching out to me because one thing about it, I had just been praying about the brother. I spoke with a friend of mine, inquired about him <clears throat> recently. And... Um, I thank God that he did reach out to me and now I know exactly what to pray for and what to do to be of encouragement and enriching to him. So we want to keep praying for one another because you never know how bad somebody's going through a situation worse than what you have encountered or gone through. 
because we could be in the same situation if it had not been for the Lord on our side. But because of God's goodness and his mercies, we are not consumed. God bless you, Courtney. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Amen. So we're going to open up a word of prayer, and we'll get into our lesson tonight. Pray that other people come on. I even got Google Meet going on. I'm not sure if anybody's going to come on or not, but it's open anyway. In case someone do decide to join in tonight on Google Meet, there's a video chat that I use as a platform as well to stream our classes each week. Amen, amen. So, Father, in Jesus' name, God, I thank you for your presence today, God, and I miss I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives, O oh God, to will and according to your good pleasure. I thank you, Lord God, for last night's slumber, this morning, awakening this day you have brought us through up to this very moment. I ask, O oh God, that you speak to us by divine revelation, minister to our hearts. Allow us to be focused on you, O oh God, to hear from you a rainbow word to help change our direction and even lead and guide us in the way that you have ordained for us to walk in. I lift up every person, Father, who's dealing with afflictions right now, God, with cancer and diabetes, heart conditions. Father, God, those dealing with, Father, uh, COPD and different illnesses that have attached themselves to their immune system, God, to break them down with colds and viruses and flus, oh God, and unknown viruses, God. We rebuke the devourer in Jesus' name. We speak healing, God, from the blood of the Lamb. Manifest your power right now, God, to send your word right where they are to heal and deliver and set them free. And so you will be glorified and exalted, God, in the midst. And I thank you, O God, that you lead us in triumph. And I ask you, Lord God, right now to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, forgive our sins, knowing and unknown sins. And Father, restore us in right standing and right relationship with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen again. I'm excited about our lesson tonight. It's a good lesson. Last week we talked about, about Jezebel, the gods of Jezebel. And we found out that the controlling spirit of the enemy in Jezebel operates with control, manipulation, scheming, sexual promiscuity, perversion, and idol worship. These are associated with the spirit of Jezebel that has a strong influence in the body of Christ. And we have to recognize that spirit when it comes to violate our mindset because we have to guard our hearts for out of it flows the issues of life. That's what the word says. And we have to realize that God is in control of every situation we go through. We have to realize that it's God who's working in our lives to manifest his power in us, to keep us steadfast in the faith of Jesus Christ in spite of what's going on in our lives. But God is right there in the midst to perfect the thing that concerns us. And many times the enemy comes in a way to distract and deter you from your faith. In Jesus Christ and we have to realize that if I want to have my focus on him I need to gravitate to materials teachings and studies that will help build my faith to keep trusting in God if I don't feed my spirit man how do I expect to be focused and grow in the things of God so I have to have a desire to want to grow want to change, to allow the Spirit of God to build me up in my spiritual muscles, to study the Word of God, to get the Word in me, because if I don't put anything in me, no deposit, there's no return. If I don't deposit anything positive in my spirit, I would not get a positive return. The same way it is in a bank account. You cannot go to an empty bank account and expect to have a withdrawal if you didn't put anything in it. And that's what God is saying tonight. Whatever it is you deposit in your spiritual bank account gives you the right, the entitlement,
to access all the benefits and promises that God has for every child of God. We have to realize that if I don't devote my time, spend time in his presence, I'll never grow in the things that God wants me to grow in to make me more productive in the kingdom of God. So I have to get into the place where I study the word of God and get it in my spirit every day. So we're going to go talk about tonight. Go to the next slide. Baal. We're going to talk about Baal, a false god. In the Hebrew, that word is pronounced Baal. But we know it's a false god. It's, it's a demonic god. And we have to get to the place we realize that there are many false gods in the world. And these things are set in place by the enemy to deter your faith from God. To get you to trust in something that's not have any power or any ability to produce anything in you that's positive. Anything that's demonic, attached with the demonic forces, is destruction. And the enemy knows exactly what to use in your life to deter your faith, to get you in a pathway of self-sabotage. You hear that? The enemy wants you to have yourself in a mindset where you self-sabotage yourself. In other words, you set up your own entrapment for defeat. Because he, he bakes you, he lures you, he entices you to follow a plan, a plan and a pathway that leads nowhere but to defeat. And we're not defeated in the eyes of God. We are strong in the Lord and the power is might. And we have to recognize that it's God that's in our lives to perfect us every day to keep us steadfast in the faith of Jesus Christ. If I don't apply myself to the word of God, how do I expect myself to overcome any attack the enemy brings into my life? The enemy attacks your mind. He attacks your health. He attacks your finances. He attacks your marriage. He attacks your children. He attacks your ministry. He attacks the calling of life. He attacks everything that comes against you to distract you from your purpose. So you got to realize that we're living in a time where every child of God needs to grow in their faith, in their walk with God. God bless you. Thank you for joining, T Teresa. God bless you. We have to get to a place in ourselves where we're devoted and committed to the call upon our lives. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you want worthy of your vocation, what would you have been called? So you got to walk worthy of your vocation. What God has called you to be in himself, to glorify his name in your everyday walk of life. If you don't take it, to, uh, charge your heart as something of importance and valuable, the enemy will come into your life and wreak havoc in your life, bring destruction and chaos in everything you have in your life. Because he knows exactly what button to push in your life to distract you and deter you. We have to recognize it's the Spirit of God that gives us the entitlement, the right to walk worthy of our vocation, what we've been called. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about Baal. A false god. Did you notice the name Baal embedded in Jezebel's father's name, Ethbal? Baal was a male Phoenician god. Isn't that something? A male Phoenician god, an idol god. And Jezebel's father name spoke of the family idolatry. So names are something important. We need to realize and, and, and even do a study sometimes to find out what do your name mean? 
Is your name attached to something of idolatry, witchcraft? Is it attached to destruction in your life? Because sometimes the name that we give our children have no value, no importance. And you got people today, when they have children, they just give them any name that sounds something that they want to be. But don't even know what's attached to their name. And we have to pay attention because God wants us to be, be, be aware and know what our names are attached to. Her father's name mm -hmm. was attached to a family lineage of idolatry. Ain't that something? And we have to pay attention because the enemy knows exactly what to do to defeat you. Ethbal, Ethbal or Ethbal, how you pronounce it? means like unto Baal, indicating that her father took on the likeness or the characteristics of the God he worshipped. You ever heard people say, uh, those that have, have dogs, the dog been around so much they begin to look like their dog? Because who you around the most, you begin to mimic or even begin to reflect their image. So like you hang around a prophet long enough, you pick up the prophet characteristics and begin to look like the prophet because you've been around them so much. Just like in marriage. When couples are married for many years, even though they're from different lineages and different families, they begin to look alike because they've been around each other so much. And that's amazing because, you know, the way God designed us to be in covenant with each other, we exemplify our leader. So whoever it is that God placed as your shepherd in your church, you begin to reflect the image of your shepherd in the spirit in your life. Ain't that something? We look like who we hang around the most. You hang around a liar, you pick up a liar's characteristics and you become a liar. You hang around a drunkard, before you know it, you become enticed to drink with them to become a habitual habit. Then you become a drunkard. So whoever you associate yourself with the most has an attachment of a familiar spirit. We talked about this before. Familiar spirits are unclean spirits that come from generation. God told Moses, tell children of Israel, that I'm going to visit the fathers and nick upon the children and the children should after them. Because the same attachment of the spirit that's unclean transfer from one generation to the next generation to the next generation. And you wonder why the same behavior patterns are exemplified in your children today of something that your ancestors the way it used to be years ago. Because of familiar spirits. You got to recognize the spirit when it comes upon your life and begin to break that spirit and denounce those spirits by Jesus Christ through the blood of the Lamb. You got to plead the blood of Jesus against familiar spirits and break those things off your mindset because those familiar spirits attach itself to your mindset. What goes in the mind goes into the heart. And reflects outside of you. So the more you spend time around an unclean spirit, that unclean spirit begins to violate and taste control, manipulate, and connive you to keep living a lascivious, wicked life. So we gotta break that spirit. So her father took on the likeness of the God he worshipped. This is very important. This one little point. The God that you worship is the same God you're worshiping is forming his image and likeness in your characteristics. Because if you hang around God long enough, the God of all creation, the God of the universe, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. 
you begin to look like him. The reason why the enemy attacks you so much is because he sees Christ be revealed through you. He knows that I can get you to the place you don't see Christ revealed through your life that can get you back to the place of darkness. You know why? The enemy loves darkness. And the word tells it that people love darkness rather than light because their deeds are full of darkness. Their characteristics began to mimic the darkness. Every conversation come out of their mouth begins to speak of darkness. Because it was darkened, the foolish hearts were darkened because of sin. So if your foolish heart is darkened, the only thing going to be exemplified out of your life is darkness. So you're going to gravitate to all the stuff that are the characteristics of darkness. The reason why, <coughs> listen to this, so many people love going to the clubs and partying and drinking because they associate themselves with kindred spirits. And those same spirits are in the atmosphere in that place, bouncing from one person to the next person to the next person to the next person. The reason why when they get full of, of alcohol, become intoxicated, they become violent, and their foolish hearts become darkened, and they spit out darkness out of their mouth. You know, when I used to go to the club, and I used to drink a lot, I was the same way. I was a quiet person. I was a humble person. Wouldn't harm a flea. Until I got under the influence. When you go to the liquor store, what do they have on top of the store? In many cases, spirits. It's called spirits. Because when you drink the substance, you open the gateway for spirits to come into your heart. And these are unclean demonic spirits. So when you're in an environment where there's nothing but spirits of uncleanliness in the atmosphere, you attach yourself to the spirit and other people around you. And those spirits do nothing but bring forth destruction and cause you to get into a heart of rebellion. And you begin to resist and oppose God with your life. You may never say it with your mouth, but your life begins to reflect the rebellion. Let's go a little further. Studying Baal gives us a greater insight into the person and the spirit of Jezebel. Isn't that something? When you understand, that's why it's very important to, to understand the different types of spirits down here in the world. Because those same spirits, they creep into the house of God and attach themselves to certain individuals who are weak in the faith and begin to spread nothing but rumors and gossip and poison in the atmosphere among the people in the house of God. We got to rebuke those spirits and stand fast on the word of God knowing that God has given us the power to overcome. You cannot defeat the spirit of the enemy in carnality. If you're living in carnality, that means you're straddling the fence. You're trying to live saved, and you're trying to live the world. If you're living in that type of behavior pattern in your mindset, your whole life is unbalanced. Not only that, it's like a wave tossed to and forth. Because now the enemy's driving you the way he chooses in the pathway he has for your demise. And you submit to that because you refuse to surrender to God. Let's go a little further. My God, my God, this is good. Baal was the principal male god of the Phoenicians. And the Phoenician people, they were wicked, 
idolatrous people and was symbolized as a calf or bull. What story in the Bible reminds you where Baal became a calf? Think about Moses. When Moses went to the mountain top, speak to God. When he got up there, there was a party going on down in the valley. And Moses was speaking with God, and God said, what is this noise I hear in, in the valley among the people? And God gave Moses Ten Commandments and told him we need to go down there to see what's going on with the people, right? But prior to that, Aaron listened to the people gather all the gold from the people, the earrings, the jewelry, melted everything down and created a golden calf. An idol. A bell for bell worship. And as they began to dance and party around this idol, they were doing all kinds of malicious things, incest, sexual sins were going on. All this stuff was happening. And guess what God said? Those of you on the Lord's side, you come over here on my side. But those of you who are not on the Lord's side, you stay with it where you are. And because of that, God opened the ground up and swallowed them up. And the people were destroyed who were idol worshipers at that moment. And you find that account in Exodus chapter 32. So the people became idol worshipers. But yet those who chose to serve and follow God, their lives were spared and they were saved from destruction, from the wrath of God. Every time you backslide and you turn away from God, you invoke the judgment of God to fall upon you. But not just you, but you and your household will suffer. And that's what God is talking about today. We need to make a decision who we going to serve, who we going to live for, because if you don't make up your mind, you are putting yourself in a position of the judgment of God to fall upon you. And God is not playing with his church. He will cause you to be stripped of your power, your authority. Look at Joshua chapter 6, verse 17 to 19. And you find out about another man who sinned against God because he coveted some things that was devoted to idols. And because of that, his name was Achan, it caused him and his family to be destroyed and burned up. God doesn't play with, with his children who dip and dabble into witchcraft. You cannot continue to walk in darkness and say I'm walking in the light. Exodus chapter 32 documents the history of the influence of Baal on the Israelites. When Moses delayed descending from Mount Sinai, where God was giving them the Ten Commandments, his absence generated fear among the people and caused them to waver. You hear that? Impatient. That's why they wavered. They were impatient. Waiting on Moses to come back with the law of God became impatient. They desired, listen to this, they desired a leader who was with them at all times. They coveted a God that would go before them. The Israelites beheld Moses as a God whom they could touch and see so that they would feel secure. You hear that? They looked up to Moses as if he was God. 
a tangible God in the earth. God is a spirit. They worship him, worship him in spirit and truth, right? How many times have you been in a church where the people itemized their shepherd and they set him up as a God and begin to worship and praise him instead of praising God? And they set him on a pinnacle where he became the high chief in the house. God says, I'm a jealous God. We talked about this last week. Thou shalt know the God before me, right? For I'm a jealous God. Anytime you allow any person, any place, anything to take the place of God in your life, you're falling into the spirit of idolatry. And it's easy to do. Let God bless you with more than enough money to do what you want to do. We neglect God and start worshiping the money. Well, now I can do what I want to do. I can travel on a go. I, do, I can do, buy this. I can buy that. Because I have what I want. The things I pray for, the things I work for, the things I labor for, I can do what I want to do without God. That's idol worship. So they could approach Aaron and insisted that he make an idol for them to worship. A God they could see in the natural. Because Moses took too long to come down from Mount Sinai. The children of Israel became impatient and turned toward idol worship. The very thing that God detests, that was an abomination to God, is the very thing their hearts was prone to gravitate to was idol worship. We do it all the time. Some their TV is their idol. Some their possessions is their idol. Some their pastor is their idol. Their church is their idol. It doesn't matter what it is. If it takes the place of the true living God in your life, it's an idol. And you need to repent from that thing and turn back to the Lord and allow God to cleanse your mind and cleanse your heart. If I tell you, if you don't get it right with God, you're leaving yourself open game for the enemy to come in and attack you and strip you of your authority. So listen here. They said to Aaron, Come, make us gods. So the true God wasn't good enough. Moses wasn't good enough to be there for them as an intercessor for God. They wanted something else and he took too long to come down from the mountain. So they gathered themselves, all the jury, and made a golden calf. Listen to this. Instead of taking authority in his priestly office, talking about Aaron, and turning their hearts toward the Lord, and his purposes. How many times have you been on the leader in a church instead of turning people and pointing them to Christ? He looked for self-approval and appraisal from the people to exalt himself. If you have a leader who always buff and boasts and always talking about himself the thing that he accomplished, the thing that he does, always appraising himself, you need to run. Because most likely his heart is prone to follow an idolatry. Because he's not pointing you to Christ and looking for all the approval upon himself from people, you need to get away from him. Listen to this. Aaron agreed with the people. He had to bring their jury and he made a golden calf in the image of Baal. It didn't just stop there, making a go to image. They mocked God, drank and played. Then they bowed down and worshiped the image of Baal, proclaiming it as their God. So what do you mean by play? Let me just start doing all malicious things that was forbidden by God to do. 
So they wanted this God to be their God. The Lord sent Moses back to deal with the rebellious Israelites. And his anger burned against them. He said they had become a stiff-necked people. Mm, mm, mm. God have mercy. That's sad. Stiff-necked. Stubborn. Rebellious, prideful, arrogant, haughty, refusal to surrender, all because their hearts were lifted up in sin to follow an idol God. But you know what? They learned that from mingling around other nations whom God told them not to mingle around. God told Moses when he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, that their sons not to marry the other nations, daughters, daughters not to be given to other nations' sons, because if they do these things, they will practice the custom of the other nations and turn to other gods. That is the exact thing that happened. So they learned the behavior pattern of these Amorites, the Philistines, and all the different other nations. And they begin to follow after their customs. So it's in their hearts to eventually turn from the true living God. Let's go on a little further. How Baal operates. The history of the Israelites' worship of Baal offers insight into the characteristics of this God. This is going to be real interesting. Watch this. The first point, Baal and the evil powers that work behind, it promotes rebellion. Baal and the evil powers at work behind it, behind what? The idol God, the idol worship, promotes rebellion. They encourage conspiracies against godly leaders. Remember that Satan was cast down from heaven because of his rebellion against God and his negative influence on one-third of the angels. You hear that? So the same spirit is at work in the church today to conspire against the leaders and the pastors in the church to produce and promote rebellion. In idol worship. Satan who is behind all of this because the same one who was an archangel in heaven who was one who was a, a worshiper of God was expelled from the heavenly kingdom and cast down to the earth. But he didn't fall by himself. He took two thirds of the angels of heaven to fall with him because his heart was lifted in pride. Read Exodus chapter 14. Second, Baal causes people to become impatient and unwilling to wait on God's timing. Baal causes people, listen, this is something here, become impatient. Give me one, I'm going to look up something right quick. One second here. Mm hmm. My God, my God. I hope this is, is really blessing somebody tonight. I hope it's blessing somebody. Because I tell you, this is a really, really good lesson. Isaiah chapter 14, my correction. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 15. So how are you falling from heaven? O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground. You who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. 
on the farthest side of the north. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Because he was lifted up in pride, he was cast out of heaven. In Ezekiel chapter 28, listen to this, Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12 and 18. So son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. And you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, beryl and onyx and jasper and sapphire, turquoise and the emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. And you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created. Till iniquity was found in you by the abundance of your trading, because you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your own splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you for kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitudes of your iniquities. By the iniquities of your trading, therefore brought fire from your midst. It devoured you. And I turn you in upon ashes. I turn turn you to ashes upon the earth. In the sight of all who saw you, and this is God speaking judgment, which took place over Satan. He called him the king of Tyre. And that's what God is saying today. That's judgment, fiery judgment, coming upon those who follow after the idolatry worship. Of the enemy. Listen to this. Third, the demonic forces behind Baal caused God's people to doubt the ability of God and Moses to lead. Demonic forces behind Baal caused people to doubt the ability of God and Moses to lead. Doesn't that happen today in our churches? that people begin to doubt the shepherd, that he's the one that God called to be over the house, who God qualified, who has got set in position to be the leader, to preach and teach the gospel, to promote the word of God in the body of people, of, God, of God's people, in their hearts. The enemy does everything in his power. To get you to rise up against your leader and spread rebellion throughout the house. We talked about before how people become backstabbers, become haters, become cancerous in the body of Christ. They gossip, spread rumors, doing everything in their power to divide. Because if you can divide the house, the house is going to fall. But together we stand if we think we can. We have to choose in our hearts every day to make a decisive decision to live to the full of our lives, the full measure of our hearts to glorify God in our life. When rebellion sets in, Satan uses it to cause people to doubt the leaders God has put over them. So people would doubt that you're called by God to be the pastor, be a minister, be an evangelist, be a teacher. They want to doubt who you say you are. 
even though you've improved it over and over with your life, that you've been sanctified, justified, acquitted by God, appointed to be the person you are in leadership. They doubt your ability to lead. And most of the time, it's because of envy and jealousy in their heart because they feel they can do your job better than what you can. We have to really pay attention who's speaking in your ear gate. You have to be careful who's speaking into your ear gate and what you see people do. And do not allow them to influence and make your heart callous and hearted against God. Because the enemy knows that he can distract you and deter you from your focus and from your purpose. He can bring you to a place of your demise. Because rebellion is set in your heart. And it causes you to become stubborn. God says rebellion is as, as witchcraft, as sin and witchcraft. And stubbornness is as idolatry. That's what God told Saul. We have to really pay attention to not allow ourselves to be distracted by the enemy, to be lifted up in pride and haughtiness and get into the place of rebellion. Because that rebellious spirit will destroy you from the inside out. It will cause you to lose every blessing God has given you, every promise has, God has for you, and it will cause you to be blinded from seeing it. Because if the gospel be hid, is hidden to them who are lost, whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them. Don't let the enemy blind your eyes from seeing what God sees in your life for you to fulfill. Let God remove the scales from your eyes and stop your deaf ears, give your heart that's full of the Spirit of God to begin to move and live in His being, allow Him to manifest His power through your life, do what He called you to do. Amen? We're going to live further. We're going to stop at the final point in this section of our book. Fourth point. The people commit sin. Turn from God and make and bow down to false idols. You might say, well, I don't uh, make any false idols in my life. I, I don't bow down to worship a false god. I, I have never done that. Well, how many times have you heard God speak to you to tell you to do something you didn't do it? So you're rebellious, you're stubborn, and you oppose God. So who are you serving when you get to that place? Are you serving God or are you serving the enemy? Because you have to make a decision. Who am I entertaining in my life? Is the television more important than the word of God? Is the radio more important than the Word of God? Computer more than the Word of God? Is the things you do in your job where you got to work all these hours, seven days a week, just to, to earn all this money that you want? So you neglect serving God? It's nothing wrong with having things. Nothing wrong with working to earn all the money you want to earn. But the Word tells us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and righteousness then all these things should be added unto you. God can take one job and cause you to have more than enough when you put your faith and your trust in him. Because a lot of times you work in three and four jobs becomes very exhausting and it weakens you in your faith because you become tired and frustrated from having to work all these hours. We need to come back to the place of divine order where we're trusting God's ability to provide and do what he says he's going to do in our lives. Because we don't do what God says to do. We're going to keep doing the things that seems right to us and follow our own desires to do what we want to do to fulfill those desires. The fifth point. They eat, drink, and rise up and play. In this instant, the word play means to laugh and mock God. You hear that? 
That means you're laughing at God, you're mocking God, you're not believing in God, you're not trusting God, you're not following God's leadership, you're not obeying his authority, you're not doing what God tells you to do. But there's a, a strong resistance against God's will in your life. Because you have a will that you want to fulfill, and you have a way you want to live, you have a desire that you want to accomplish. So you neglect God, turn a deaf ear to his voice, and close your eyes from walking in obedience. So the sixth point. The people turn aside from God's direction. They turn aside from God's direction. Eat, drink, and be merry. That's what uh, Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes in one of the chapters. He said, wine is for drink, food is for the belly. And he talks about this. How we rise up, we eat and we drink and we play. We have to really be careful who is leading and guiding you away from God. Our final point. They become stiff-necked people. And stiff-necked means what? Stubborn. You ever try to give somebody wisdom and knowledge to help them do better in what they're doing in their life? And they kept resisting you, became stubborn, didn't want to hear what you have to say, even though you were telling the truth. And then when they fall and they realize what you were saying to them was really something they need to hear to give them guidance to make the right decision. We got children do the same thing. Tell them don't hang around certain people because you see the spirit on that person is not right. And also they hang around this person anyway, end up in trouble, or end up pregnant, or getting somebody else pregnant. All because they didn't listen. Because they did not want to heed the sound doctrine, they didn't want to heed counsel, they didn't want to listen to the voice of God through their parents, so they opposed their parents. Y'all don't know what you're talking about. This is my life. Let me live my life. I can do what I want to do, and, and I'm not going to let you control my life. So they say with attitude. You can discipline them, you can punish them, and they still will find a way to get around your authority to do what they want to do. I was one of those sneaky children, myself, growing up. And the things they tell me not to do, because I was a PK, if you don't know what that means, preacher kid, I always had to go to church. I had three sisters who didn't have to go to church all the time. But every time the church doors were open, my father made me go to church. So I couldn't go to parties. I couldn't go to concerts. I couldn't go to skating rinks. I couldn't go bowling. I could do nothing with the school choir if it had something to do with church to keep me from coming to church. I couldn't do anything. And so my, my mind was always strategizing. How can I sneak out the house to do what I want to do? How can I lie to my parents to get them to prove what I want to do? And I've done that many times. I lied. I cheated. I even stole. I've done all kinds of stuff I shouldn't have done. And it's only by the grace of God that I didn't end up in jail. But because God had a calling on my life, he had a time when he knew I was going to turn around and come to him and surrender. He knew that at a season of my life, I was going to be broken down to be raised up in his presence. And that's what God does with us today, my brother, my sister. He lets you do what you want to do when you want to do it. Go the way you want to go in your life. Fulfill the sinful desires of your heart. But if he has a calling in your life, he has a timing where he knows it's going to be a time of repentance where you're going to turn your life around and come to him. For the words that the Lord knows those are his, but the wicked he knows from afar. He knows when we stray away from him, but he also knows the time when we're coming back to him. So I encourage you tonight, if you're in a backslidden state, 
you one of those this lesson talking about tonight who been following after idol worship, became stiff necked, just rebellious, making excuses, the reason why you <clears throat> excuse the reason why you can't go to church. We need to wake up and pay attention. Because that's an entrapment from the enemy. Because he knows among fellowship there's strength. The reason the word tells us not to forsake the assembly as some among us does. Because he knows when we come together, we empower each other to make it from day to day to day through fellowship. God does not have any long ranges in his kingdom. He has a body with his name upon it who is called his bride. And it's up to you and it's up to I to really come back to the place where we surrender to the leadership of, of our Lord Jesus Christ and follow in obedience to his will. Allow him to lead God and direct us in the way of truth and the way of righteousness. If you're on here tonight and you don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior, the word tells us for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. That if thou shalt confess in the mouth of the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart that God raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth man believes in righteousness, with the heart confession is made. So if you believe that Jesus died, was buried and rose again for your sin and your iniquity, your shortcomings, your failures, you can be born again by praying this simple prayer with me. You might even be a backslider. You're included in this prayer. All you have to do is repent, allow God to wash you clean, and get back in there and start working for the kingdom of God, doing what you've been called to do with the full force of your heart to do it. So pray this simple prayer with me tonight, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord God to forgive me for my sins, knowing and unknown sins. Come into my heart and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I thank you for giving me another chance. And I ask you, Lord God, that you become my Lord and Savior from the day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I pray that that bless you tonight. If something is said to inspire, to edify, to encourage you to get into your word, study, show yourself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed. Right divide the word of truth. Amen. If this lesson really been a blessing to you, you desire to sow a seed into the ministry, the link is on the bottom. It's on the bottom of the comment section of, of this live. Whatever seed you sow, it goes into the ministry. And also help support find the books where I do different lessons. And those who don't have books and desire a book of each lesson that I do, you can purchase a book. So I pray you be encouraged and be enriched in your spirit. Know that God loves you. God cares about you. And he's here for you to help you get through every trial, every test, every situation you encounter. But I also um, petition your prayers tonight for my friend Diare, as I mentioned at the beginning of the live, who called me today, who's been diagnosed with pancreas cancer and been going through a storm, a whirlwind in his life. But yet God has got him. He's, he's encouraging him through other people to keep fighting a good fight of faith, keep trusting God for healing and deliverance. Now I ask you to pray for Diari uh, Rhea, Diari Rhea, R-H-E-A. And his name is like deer, with the word, like spelled deer with an E, deer with an E. I want you to pray for him. Keep him in your prayers. You come across your, your heart, begin to lift up a prayer for him because the prayer of the righteous man avail as much. We come together in one accord. I believe God's going to do a miracle in this life. I know God can heal any type of disease. doesn't matter what it is. And I believe God will bring him through it. If he done it for me, he done it for others I know, he can do it for him as well. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I, I thank you, Lord God, for the power of anointing to heal and deliver, God, those who are dealing with cancer right now, God. 
any sickness, any infirmity, God, that's attached itself to the immune system. We ask for God that you purge it out right now through the blood of the Lamb. Let your word manifest, God, in their bodies right now, God, to speak life, begin to flow through them, God, the life of Jesus Christ, that you would raise them up off their bed of affliction. I believe that you're able to do it, God, that you have the power to do it. We're standing in faith in one accord, where there's two or three come together in agreement. You said in your word, you're in the midst, O oh God. I'm asking that you would do it, Father, for your glory. And I thank you, God, that we will hear and we will see the victory manifest in all of their lives, O oh God, to promote your glory in the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Thank all of you for tuning in tonight. I pray this really bless you and encourage you in your spirit. Keep standing on the word. Know that God is with you. He's on your side as the reigning king. You are victorious. You are an overcomer. Don't allow doubt or fear to settle in your mind. You speak life over yourself. The word says in Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 6. The Lord says, I will heal my people and let them enjoy abundant peace and security. You can be at peace and know that you are secured in the hands of God from the attacks of the enemy. Though they come, though they form, they will not prosper. Because God has promised in his word that I will keep you secure, I will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. So you keep your mind on the Lord tonight and know that God is on your side as the reigning king. And he will continue to lead you down the pathway of truth and righteousness and be closed in the Lord Jesus Christ and holiness. Without holiness, no man can see the Lord. The word tells us, take off the filthy garments of the flesh and be clothed in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's talking about you and it's talking about me. Every day you get up out of your bed, ask the Holy Spirit to clothe you in the garment of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ. That you can walk in his holiness throughout the day. And I guarantee you'll find peace that surpasses all understanding. May you all be blessed tonight. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift his counts upon you. May the Lord continue to lead and guide you in the path of the truth and path of righteousness. For his name's sake, in Jesus' name, you all have a great night. Shalom. Peace be unto you. Before I close, if anyone have any questions or comments, you want to inbox me, feel free to inbox me on Facebook Messenger. And I will respond to your questions and answer accordingly. Amen. Spread this live with someone else that you feel that might need to hear this. It will be on YouTube. YouTube is attached to the link on this comment section of the page. And you'll be able to share this video with someone else tonight to be a blessing to someone else who needs to be set free from the spirit of idolatry. Amen. You all have a great night. And thank you again for tuning in. Shalom. Peace be to you. Amen. Good night, Teresa. God bless you. Amen. Good night. God bless you too. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Amen. Glory to God.